Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. On May 16th, Photometer for the Mac was launched. And in my last video, I discussed the top 5 features of Photometer for the Mac. I said it is an app well worth considering for anyone who wants quality raw editing on all Apple devices without the high price tag of some of its top competitors. However, it's important to note that Photometer for the Mac is the first release and it's definitely not perfect. And in this video, I'll be talking about three disadvantages in Photometer for the Mac that you should be aware of before making the purchase. So let's get right into that. The first disadvantage is the limited photo manager. Photometer for the Mac improves on Photometer for the iPad and iPhone in that it has a built-in photo manager. The photo manager allows you to navigate through thumbnails or a film strip view. You can customize the thumbnails by changing the aspect ratio or the size. The photo manager supports organization through the ability to create albums that you can use to group your photos virtually. You can also create folders that can be used to create groups of albums. You can favorite a photo by selecting the heart button. And all your favorites are easily accessible in the favorites folder located in the left sidebar. Aside from those features though, all in all, the functionality of Photometer's Photo Manager is pretty sparse. The Photo Manager doesn't allow for rating or tagging. Its search capabilities are very limited. It just supports search by file name. So you can't search for a photo based on any EXIF data like the camera make or lens model. There's no sorting in any form available in the Photo Manager. The bottom line is don't get Photometer if you need a fully featured photo manager. The second disadvantage of Photometer is its brush has no edge detection. Despite the advent of AI masking, masking with the brush is still important because AI masking is prone to fail pretty frequently. And the viable recourse when AI masking fails is using the brush. For example, in this photo, I would want to brighten the dark shadows in the rock formation at the back of the photo. Unfortunately, using select subject does not consider the rock formation part of the subject. So I have no other way but to mask using a brush. And without edge detection, that would be quite tedious. Another example is this photo where I would want to darken the sky. As you can see here, select sky produces errors which require, once again, manual brushing to fix. So hopefully, the Pixelmator team can add edge detection to Photometer's brush in the future. All of its major competitors, Lightroom, On1, and Capture One, have excellent implementations of brush edge detection. As you can see here, Capture One's edge detection is extremely helpful in allowing me to create a precise mask of this boat. The third disadvantage of Photometer is the limited dynamic range of some of its tone and color adjustments. Photometer's tone and color adjustments are definitely excellent, as I've said many times in the past. But one thing I find that is weaker than its competitors is the lack of dynamic range when it comes to extreme lighting conditions. As an example, here is a photo where there's an extreme red cast caused by the lamps in this park in Japan. As you can see here, while Capture One is able to correct the cast and even go way over to turn the warm red cast into a cool blue cast, Photometer hits the limit fast and is not able to completely remove the warm cast. Another example is in this highlights adjustment. In this situation, I want to tone down the bright lights in this photo. As you can see here, Capture One can bring back the detail and color of the lamps with no problem whatsoever. Photometer, on the other hand, once again hits the limit, and while it's able to bring back a little of the detail, it's not as much as Capture One. Even though I reduced the exposure, you can see that there's really no way to bring back more detail. So there you have it, three disadvantages of Photometer for the Mac. Is it a deal breaker? Well, if you're looking for a quality raw editor, the many strength of Photometer accompanied by its great price far outweigh any disadvantages I've cited here. 
However, if you're in search for a fully functional photo management app like Lightroom, then Photomator does not have that type of functionality in this first release. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know if you're going to be purchasing Photomator for the Mac and what do you think of this first release. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.